Hi, welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. And this program is about the evolution of our consciousness and how people all over are waking up to a higher level of who they really are. And we're in a cultural revolution as far as our understanding of our soul, our spiritual evolution, our process of consciousness and awakening. And that's why I have today's guest with me. Janet Neal, who's written a beautiful book called Soul in Control. And you were a basic, like, everyday person, housewife, mother, and then something happened that woke you up to realize there was something more. Tell us what that was. Right. I call myself, the, the book says, uh, Reformed Superwoman, mm -hmm. because I was one of those women that bought into the whole superwoman uh, paradigm. Of what is a superwoman? Yeah, a superwoman is someone who feels the need to do everything, do mm -hmm. it by herself, and do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. So I thought I should do that. Right. Basically, I lived my life doing shoulds. You so should be the perfect mother, perfect yes. wife, perfect house homemaker, and right. and what happened though? I was tremendously unhappy, and because I because you could never get it right. No, I did everything right, but I did so many things that the balls. You know, I was really good at at juggling like a what? lot of balls. Like, like um, I worked full time. I had um, three children that I was. was was responsible for you know taking them to school their homework their doctor's appointments mm -hmm. any mother can relate to any of that kind of thing um, I taught Sunday school I had pets that I took care of um, I had you know another home that I had to maintain mm -hmm. um, it, there was just a lot of things going on and besides you didn't have any time for yourself and no time for myself but you were serving your family exactly your and so what happened so what happened was one day I was getting ready for work, mm -hmm. and um, I was not happy. And but just going through my usual routine. But you didn't know you weren't happy because you just thought that's how you were supposed to be. No, I knew I wasn't oh, happy. Oh really? <laughs> yes, which was actually very disturbing because I was doing everything I should do. So uh, why wasn't I happy? Yeah, you should be happy. Right, exactly. Right. So that big should was looming out there, and I thought something not right mm -hmm. and I am getting ready for work and I put hair gel on and then all of a sudden my face starts to feel really tight and I looked and I put the hair gel on my face Oh. and yeah and it's very extra firm like they say <laughs> and what I realized was that was what I call my hair gel moment it literally made me stop and look at myself in the mirror because you were unconscious. You I were was totally unconscious. And you didn't know what you were doing. You were unautomatic. Exactly. And so you said, what am I doing? I said, what am I doing? Uh, What's important to me? And what did you then realize about that? So it, it took a lot of work, and it, and it took me going back to the basics, mm -hmm. um, looking at my values. What, what's really important to me? Mm -hmm. um, my family is very important to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, being the head of the PTA committee, not so important to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what was I doing for me because it was the right thing to do? What was I doing because somebody told me I should? So I had to learn to let go of the shoulds. But how did you figure that out? How did you know that um, because you had no sense of your own self-awareness. Mm -hmm. What was your lessons and in, in as you uncovered your own spirit? What? Yeah, I uh, am fortunate to have a lot of very good friends who have helped me, but one in particular had attended the University of Santa Monica and had gotten a degree, a master's degree in spiritual psychology. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying to me for five years, you should go you would really like it. And I said, yeah, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. I live on the East Coast, and Santa Monica's on the West Coast, and I have three children, and, 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 and I had a million excuses. Mm -hmm. So at this point in my life, when everything felt like it was falling apart and I didn't know where to turn, that came back up again, and I thought, why not? Mm -hmm. So I, I embarked upon that journey, and it really was a very in-depth um, analysis of myself you know, what really matters to me. And it was 
the most uh, life-affirming, life-changing thing for me. But were you aware of your soul, your own spirit? What, did you have any awareness of that? Before going yes, into the program? Yes. I did. I mean, I was always somebody who was um, spiritually aware, if you will. But through my life, I, I turned away from that mm -hmm. and really had the outside world be more of my guide than my inner uh, guides. So when you had that hair gel moment, mm -hmm. you realized that your life wasn't working the way it should. Right. And then you looked to these alternatives. Right. And you went to take a degree in, what was it called? Spiritual psychology. And what did you learn about yourself there? I learned that I am, I and my higher power, my creator, the universe, whatever you want to call it, are one. Mm -hmm. That I am connected, um, that, that we are all connected. And there is this abundance that is out there, this power that is out there, that is, that is within and, and is all around us, and it's there for us to tap into. But what was your evidence of that? Oh, I mean, how did you know that? You the knowing me. is really, it's kind of this feeling that I get um, when I get that knowing feeling. There's a difference between knowing it in my head and knowing it in my heart. I mean, tell people that because tell people like how they can know hmm. w when they're in touch with their soul and when it's just like their automatic voice, I mean, mm -hmm. going on. I mean, okay. Yeah, what, what I found is answering the question is, is who am I doing this for? Am I doing this for somebody else? Am I doing this for myself? And I found that there's a difference between being guided by your head and being guided by your heart. For me, there are certain things that, like I found that I start to cry when, um, when something really touches me deeply. And that's how I know that something is really real. Um, for other people, it, it may be something different. Um, but it's really, it's this, it's this deep-seated knowing um, that is unshakable. Because you can lead a revolution of women, uh, I mean, homemakers, who are not in touch with that. You can be a bridge mm -hmm. for people waking up. And, yeah. that, and that will change the planet. Absolutely. I mean, and that's how you see yourself, right? Absolutely, yeah. I, I have the belief that women are amazingly powerful beings mm -hmm. that don't realize it. And so I believe it in to my bone marrow that women can change the world. I mean, the Dalai Lama has said the same thing. So how do we activate mm -hmm. those women that are living the life that you were leading right. and wake up to their soul? Yeah. What I do when I work with women is mm -hmm. I help them to really take the first step and, and I, I have a a series of exercises that I take women through. And the very first thing is to take a look at your values. It's really writing them down on paper, pu putting down your top 10 values, and then posting it somewhere. And what I recommend people do is that you put it like on your mirror, on your desk, on your refrigerator. And when you go to make a decision and you don't know which way to turn, all you have to do is go and look at those values because they tell you what's important and they will guide you. So that's an exercise anyone can do. So you just write down mm -hmm. what your values are. Mm -hmm. so like if so, it's not my value, but someone says shoes that you know that <laughs> <laughs> that's not the <laughs> right, not, right that's track. That's not a value. <laughs> that's not a value. So what would be like, what, what are, like what mm -hmm. would they be? Like, like, um, like for me, creativity oh. is a value. Um, family. You know, uh -huh. being with family is a value. Um, what else? Um, security can be a value for some people. Mm -hmm. And the thing with values is that values can, will stay with you throughout your lifetime. Mm -hmm. I, I bet if you valued friendship as a child, right. I guarantee you will value friendship older. Your whole life. Your whole life. So you look at, you list your values, yes. and then you see if your values are being met in this? Correct. So another great thing to do is to also make a list th of the things that you do in a day, and then compare those things to your values. 
and you may find out that you are doing things that have no values attached to them or you may find that you have values that have no activities attached to them and so that's when people start to feel disconnected when they are not aligned with what's important to them but for you I mean you had to take your kids to school and to classes and do mm -hmm. you had to do all those right. things I mean mm -hmm. you didn't have to but you're a responsible right. good person so how do you, how would you with this awareness have juggled mm -hmm. those situations that you needed to do yeah it's much more than just time management yeah. it's much more than um, you know a calendar issue mm -hmm. so uh, I had a client once who had come to me and said that she felt very unaligned very out of balance mm -hmm. and I took her through this exercise and she she was a stay-at-home mom she did everything for her family she just felt she did nothing for herself and when we went through the exercise we found out that everything she did was aligned with her values mm -hmm. and what happened was it changed her attitude so not only like what give me a like a real example of that a real example? Yeah, yeah, for that woman uh -huh. let's say. for her it was her, everything that she did she did for her family so she took care she had two daughters mm -hmm. and she you know oh she took care fed of them she mm -hmm. took care of them got them to school and she valued them, family and she valued family so she was fulfilled because yes. she was doing activity that she met her values. exactly and what she had been buying into mm -hmm. was again this should that society was telling her that she should be doing she should be working outside the home she mm -hmm. should be you know doing something else but why didn't it work for you because you were doing things that you yeah tell me uh -huh. what was going on that was the conflict in your life because you probably value family and you were doing things for you I, I did so what was missing in no what was missing is that I didn't know who I was oh and that's something you value exactly well, it's something we all should value. yes and and a, a really great example was I was working in a job Job that had zero creativity in it and creativity is very high on my list and it really ended up making me feel like I was dying inside mm. because I really was not honoring that part of myself so what are you doing now to activate the value of creativity so now I write books okay <laughs> I have a blog that I do on a uh, weekly basis mm -hmm. um, I do all sorts of different things I, I actually there's a story in my book about how um, I always wanted to be uh, an actress and I believe you know in my mind I've won several Academy Awards um, and yet I never tried out for any plays until uh, since junior high school and somebody called me on it and they said well if this is something that's important to you why aren't you doing it so I uh, uh, had to do it so last year I tried out for our local community theater and I was a tree in the Wizard of Oz and it was so much fun and it was it was so fulfilling to me because it really tapped into that creative part of me and I and what was most important was I was honoring myself I was honoring my soul I was listening to what was important to me and I honored that so you're really saying to women and to people what is important to you absolutely and so people can be stuck in what they should do absolutely like feed their family and take and mm -hmm. what they want to do and so what do you say to women who have that conflict you know right maybe they don't really want to take care of their family but right. they should take care of their yeah. family so well, there's a difference between should yeah. and what's a real need okay. um, because I mean children needs to be taken care of yeah if you've got a family you've got to do that so um, the if you can't do it yourself then you figure out a way that it gets hire done. somebody or help get help exactly right. exactly so just um, you know there are, again be creative about things mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that you ignore things that are on your plate mm -hmm. um, you can't you can't do that in a lot of, of instances mm -hmm. um, but it's really taking a look of what's important to you um, and family if you have a family why do you have a family oh because you should have a family right but sometimes it's too late if you've <laughs> already had a family <laughs> yes mm -hmm. but the, but there was a reason why you have a family and and I guarantee that anyone who has a family is going to find uh, 
a reason why they want to have a family. So let's now talk about the soul level because mm -hmm. you know we're here, we have families, we mm -hmm. have relationships, mm -hmm. but on this other level we incarnate into mm -hmm. these bodies right. for a higher reason. Right. You're like deep contemplations with yourself. Mm -hmm. What have you discovered on a soul level? Um, I have discovered that I am a teacher yeah. and I've known that you know for a long time but I've really tapped into what that means um, that I'm not afraid to speak mm -hmm. my truth mm -hmm. um, in the past I'd be afraid of saying something I'd be afraid to be on the show right. because what would somebody think about it mm -hmm. you know it was more important for me in the past to what everybody else thought Right. rather than speaking what is true, what I know. Mm. Um, so that is what I have tapped into, mm. the knowledge that I am a teacher, that I am here. And, and like you said earlier, I'm a bridge mm. that I can really, you know, been there, I've been there, done that, and I know what it's like to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I, the women that I work with, um, they get me. I mean, several women have told me, uh, have written to me after reading my book and have said, do I know you? Because you know me. And, um, and so I can help people be through my own mm -hmm. uh, example, just in the way that I live my life. And so because I love the name Soul in Control Reflections on a Reformed Superwoman. I mean, Soul in Control. I mean, we need to evolve to the level where where we're trusting that. Yes, absolutely. So how do we trust mm -hmm. the... It takes time. But what's the process? Tell so me... So the process is, is you, start with li you start with little things. You start with, you know, one little thing that you could do. Maybe you trust, you have a feeling that you should, uh, I don't want to use the word should, you have a feeling that going to an event is a good thing for you. I'll give you a personal example. Last year, I had the same thing. I had a feeling, I got invited to an event in the city, and I had a feeling it would be a good thing to do, that there was some reason I got invited to this. I had other plans, and I had to trust this gut feeling that I had that it was the right thing to do. And I found a way out of it, gracefully, out of the other things that I had planned, and I went to this event. And because of that, that led to so many connections that were just powerful connections and people that I've been able to assist on their paths. Hmm. So there's a part of listening and trusting totally. that's part of this evolutionary process that we're in. Absolutely. And uh, even if we feel conflicted or we've made a commitment, it's okay mm -hmm. because there's another level mm -hmm. of our being mm -hmm. guiding us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one thing that uh, I know a lot of women have trouble with mm -hmm. is saying no. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very... I have trouble saying no. <laughs> the first time I said it was really hard. But it felt good. And, <laughs> and it's, it's a muscle that you have to, to yeah. exercise. Yeah. You have to practice it. I have no problem saying no now. Okay. But in the beginning, it was very difficult. And mm. so I have clients that feel the same way. It's like, oh, I couldn't... Buy. I'm like, try it. Do mm. it once. Do it with something that's not so hard mm. and to say no to. Mm. And you just get used to saying that. And then after a while, you know, it becomes second nature again. So your clients, what, what do you do with your clients? How do you work? I mean, who, who, mm -hmm. who are the kind of people that see you? I predominantly work with women who are stuck in some aspect of their life, personally or professionally. So you're like a coach for them? I am a coach. You are a coach. I'm a certified coach. Okay. Yeah. So they're stuck and you get them... Because a lot of the women I've lived normal housewives don't have any idea about the soul level, right? Well, that's, that's maybe a generalization. That's, it is. <laughs> no, thank you. I mean, I'm saying, I'm just looking at my family. Uh huh. You know, my mother, you know, has no idea about. Although, I would tend to, to disagree with you right, on that. That's because okay. Because of Oprah. Yes, Oprah, Oprah has right? opened a lot of people up. She's exactly. Amazing. So, but Oprah's kind of. She, she's definitely a bridge yes. to have people to think different ways. Okay, you're probably right. More people have an idea <laughs> than, um, than, than I'm aware yeah. of. And what's really great about it, especially in this time, uh -huh. is 
because of people like Oprah um, and Deepak Chopra, Chopra and um, who's been on my show? I know. Yeah. Um, because of people like them uh -huh. and people like myself, mm -hmm. people are open to it now, and so there there are people, there are teachers out there willing to help the students. I think it's made a huge revolution to this awakening and you're contributing to that too. Thank so you. what would you like to leave people with? What kind of understanding about accessing their soul consciousness? Yeah, you can tell people. Okay. What I'd really like people to to realize is that it is so important that you are true to yourself that you listen to your soul, you be guided by your soul, and move from your head to your heart. It's moving for women from moving from being a superwoman to being a superb woman. It's about the being rather than the doing. That is good. And the idea of the soul is just listening to what your heart's telling you. Listen to your feelings, not to Absolutely. what your mind is telling you should do, but how do you feel? Who do you want to be with? Talk a little bit about the relationship part because I think that's a place where we get messed up about shoulds and oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I kind of fell into that myself, but well, we all um, <laughs> no, but talk about how we get clear of that. Um, again, it's getting back to your values uh -huh. um, and and being very clear on what's important to you, what's important um, for the here and now and into the future. Um, as best as you can tell. Um, it's really, it, it's learning to not be afraid to say no and to let go of those shoulds. Right. And you're, just one more thing, you're also a public speaker, you also speak. I do. Talk about that a little bit because um, yeah. I think people should know about that. Yeah. So I do a lot of um, talks uh -huh. um, at different events, mm -hmm. uh, charity events. About uh, what? For organizations. I do a lot of talks on work-life balance. I talk um, in corporations about how they can, uh, how employees can find the balance um, mm -hmm. that will help them to be more productive mm -hmm. people and employees. Um, I talk about um, letting go of the shoulds, yes. le leading a should-free life. Mm -hmm. No, don't should on yourself, they say. Exactly. <laughs> thank you, Janet. Thank you. Is there any, like, closing words you'd like to tell people? Because I think... I think you're in touch with something um, on a higher conscious level that, that's coming to you. It's like unfolding inside mm -hmm. of you every day. And I think, you know, talk, just leave people with the idea when they wake up in the morning what they can do to access their soul. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, what I have found really, really helpful is meditation. Oh, um, yes. And I was one of those people, again, the same friend that told me to go to, uh, to the school, yeah. said, uh, you should meditate. And uh, again, one of those shoulds that I was gratefully not going to pay attention to. And then she said, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I had all the things, uh, reasons why I couldn't do it. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. And she said, start with five minutes. Can you mm -hmm. sit for five minutes? Right. I said, I, I can do that. I think meditation is one of the best it ways really to get is. in touch with our soul. Oh, so what was the hardest thing for you to let go of from your old life to deal mm. with? What was the biggest confrontation that you were up against when you went to this school and had to deal with that? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, well, you know, I was in, I was in a marriage at mm -hmm. that time. And... Um, the interesting thing about the marriage was mm. when I went into the marriage, um, I never mentioned the fact to my soon-to-be husband that I spirituality was very important to me. Um. Never talked about it. I was I was glad to kind of let that one go, you know, because he wasn't spiritual and okay, mm. I can I don't have to deal uh. with that. And when this burgeoning spirituality started to come up, mm. and I really felt the need and desire to learn more about it, um, it really sent us in different directions. And so the marriage had to end yeah. if you were going to be as... Well, exactly. Th thank you for sharing that. I really uh -huh. appreciate it. Because I think that actually has to happen for a lot of people if it's yeah. going to evolve. Let go of the people, yeah. not just marriage, but people who are not on their level and they don't yes. want to let go of friends. But you have to if you're... You have to. And, I, and I'm not saying you have to 
get divorced in order to become but spiritual. Sometimes you do. But it's <laughs> but w to your point, you know, letting go of of people who are not positive energy in your life. Right, and if you're married to them, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, very nice. Thanks. I've been talking to Janet Neal. Her book, Soul in Control, which is really all of us. Absolutely. I'm Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. If you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com, or email me at A, the letter A, at newrealities.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.